Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the latest updates to Elementor Pro, the new widgets that have been added, how we can use them and how we can add them to an already existing design. So let's take a look at all those new additions and how we can use them right now. So we've covered Elementor Pro in a previous video and in this one we're just going to take a look at the new additional widgets that have been added to the latest version and some of the other settings and configuration options we've now had added to this Pro version. If you like working with Elementor Pro and you're considering buying a version of it for a website you're working on, please consider using the affiliate link in the description below and help out the WP Touch channel in doing so. We get a small kickback from every single purchase made through that link. Anyway, let's crack on with what we're going to take a look at. So I've got the page I've created in a previous video and you can see we've got various different Elementor elements on there. We've got some WooCommerce content, we've got a slider at the top, we've got some additional WooCommerce, uh, WooCommerce links down the below and we're now ready to start adding in some additional content. So if we go and take a look on the left hand side and we scroll through you can see we've got the Pro Elements and as you can see there's already a range of additional options available to us. So we've got pricing table, we've got some additional WooCommerce add-ons, we've got templates, price lists, a whole range of different tools we can use. So let's take a look at what's been added to this latest version. Now the first one we're going to take a look at is the pricing table. Now if you've ever worked with pricing tables in any kind of visual editor or inside WordPress, you'll know some of these can be good, some of those can be bad, some can be just really time consuming to do anything with. And I've found when testing the latest edition of Elementor Pro out in the price table, it really is a quick and easy and very intuitive way of working. So let's check that out in this first video. So let's just scroll down, let's say add a new section in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be three columns. We're going to do a three block pricing table. So we click on that. There's our first three blocks and we're now ready to start working with adding the content. So if we come over to the left hand side under the pro elements, let's choose the price table, drag that over and drop it in there. And you can see what that does is it creates a placeholder version of what this particular pricing table is going to look like. If we look on the left hand side we can see we've got the familiar way of working, we've got content, style and advanced. And we've got individual sections for each of the different elements that make up this pricing table. So let's go through and set this first one up and then we can just take a look at duplicating that and making the changes we want to the next and the third options from this. So you can see it's pretty intuitive. At the top we've got the titles for the header. So you can see we've got I am title and I am subtitle. So we could change that to wherever we want. So let's just say mega widget. And we'll put a subtitle in there. One you can't live without. And as you can see, as with everything when working in Elementor, it's pretty much instantaneous when you make those changes. So you can see we've now got that reflected in the first block. So let's jump down to the pricing section. And as you can see, we've got some simple options on there, currently working in dollars. If you want to change that to any other currency, you can see there's a whole range on there. And if you don't have what you're looking for, you can go to custom at the bottom. So I'm going to choose pound sterling because I'm in the UK. If we wanted to put this on sale and highlight the fact it's on sale, we can just toggle this switch that says it's on sale. Once we do that, you can see it adjusts the style and we can now input both the original price and the discounted price and that'll display it nicely on the page itself in the relevant section. We can set the monthly period, weekly period, or we can take that out completely. You can see if we take it out, Elementor now knows that we're not putting anything in there and it'll completely remove that from the pricing table. Next up we've got features and you can see these are listed underneath so we can go in and we can edit those so we can click give it any kind of name we want we can go through and set an icon for this you can see we've got a whole range of different icons we can use we can change the icon color if we want to so we can easily come in and say let's make those red just choose that from the color picker and you can see immediately reflects that or blue or whatever kind of color you want to use for that. If you want to reorder any of these, you can simply come to the left hand side where you've got this little gray handle and we can reorder those in any way we want. And again, like you say, you can see that they update almost in real time. We've got add an item. So if you want to add a fourth item into this example, we can do that by simply clicking at the bottom and you can see our new item is shown up in there. Pretty simple and straightforward. If we go to the footer, you can see we've got the button. As you can see, that's listed there. We can put whatever we want in for the button text, whatever link we want, and we can use the open link in the new tab. 
and we can put in some additional text to sit underneath the button. Pretty self-explanatory. And finally, we've got the ribbon, which is it in this section on the top right-hand corner. As you can see, it currently says popular or most popular. We can change that to whatever we want, or we can just disable it completely. So we'll leave that in there, and we'll just say on sale. We can specify whether that's going to be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Entirely up to you if you want to do that. And that's the basics of the content information. We jump over to the style tab you can see we now have a range of options that allow us to style the way this particular widget is going to be displayed at the moment we've got the background color so we can change that for the header let's just go in and say let's have something like a light green let's adjust the color on there and the transparency we can go and adjust this get exactly what we want take that over get a slightly more yellowy green and there we go so you can see pretty easy we can now come down and say where well, we want to change the title color because that doesn't stand out too well. So let's click on there and let's just choose a dark gray. Bang, there we go. Do exactly the same then for the subtitle. And we'll just choose a slightly lighter gray. You can see we can change the typography that's being used on this. So currently it's using what it considers the default for this. We can click off and switch it on. We can change the size of this, the font family, the weight, the transform and the style, line height letter space in and we can even do this on a per device basis so if we want to set the line height different to be on mobile devices to what it is on a desktop or a tablet we can simply engage that by clicking on the simple little icon that brings up three different options you can see we've got desktop tablet and mobile devices and we can just enable any of those it'll update the way it looks on screen and we can now make adjustments to that in real time so loads and loads of options available let's just switch that back off so we can disable it we can do exactly the same then for the subtitle if we enable that you can see all of the same options are back in there including the mobile and the desktop devices okay so next up we've got the pricing section as you can see we've got the option to do all the different kind of styling we want the currency symbol its position so we can change that to whatever we want we can adjust the size of it the fractional parts you can see we can adjust that which is for your dot 99 and so on so we can adjust that to wherever you want the thing it's going to fit into your particular design and the same then for the original price we can position that where we want we can change the topography the color of it so let's just say we wanted that to be a little bit more highlighted so let's just say we'll choose blue on there and then we just swap that over to a red color so we can see exactly how much it was and how much of a saving it is okay pretty easy the topography we can change that on there and exactly the same for the features and so on and so forth including all the lines and everything else on there so lots and lots of options we can come down to the ribbon and you can see we can change that so at the moment it's a little bit sort of nondescript not really standing out in this let's just change that up let's give that a nice red color make it stand out on there nice bright red here we go if we want to change the text color we can do that or the typography on there we can even add a box shadow so tons and tons of options available in there Finally, we've got the advanced section. As you can see, we can choose the margins and the padding for this if we want to animate it. If we want to apply custom styles through CSS IDs or classes, we can do that from this point. We can go in the background of borders. We can change all that. We can do whatever we want in there. We can put border radiuses on there. So let's just say we want to put, let's just go for something like 10 so we can see it. You can see now that rounds the corners of our table. If you want to add a box shadow we can do that you can see that now raises out the page and we can control how that looks we can go and control the responsive element of it whether this is actually displayed on a mobile device on a tablet or a desktop so we can switch those on and off and finally we've got the custom css so if we'd used any of these uh stylists sort of css ids and css classes then we could use the custom css at the bottom to reference that and start making changes to it so that's what's in there for the price table so before we sort of finish up on this all we need to do if we want to duplicate this and create a more comprehensive one is now we've finished with the first element we could just duplicate that twice and then just simply drag that over into the next and the final sections then we can tweak the colors and the information that's displayed on those quite simply just by clicking on the edit and you can see we can now come in and we can change the pricing on this so we'll just say this isn't on offer this is now 59.99 and if you want to change the color and all those different things, we can do all that. We can turn the ribbons on and off. So you can see very quick, very easy and pretty intuitive as well. So that's how easy it is to work with the new pricing table in the latest version of Elementor Pro. So now that we've covered the pricing tables, I want to move on to one of the other latest additions to Elementor Pro. And that's the ability to create gradient backgrounds.
Now, this is something that's getting more and more popular, and the fact you can now create them inside Elementor is a great addition to this already powerful piece of software. So let's take a look at how we can do that very easily. So we're going to use the same area that we worked with to create our three-column pricing table, and we're going to just expand that a little bit more, make it a bit more visually eye-catching. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to choose Section, and you can see that now gives us the ability to go and customize this block that the particular element sits in. So in this example, the three columns inside our pricing table, the row that that sits in, we're going to edit that. So we've got this set up. Once I click on it, you can see we open up a whole range of different options. If we wanted to adjust the structure of it, we can do that quite easily. So you can see we can adjust the way the three columns interact with each other, the sizes and so on. We put those back to where they were. You can see we can stretch the section. We can set the content to be boxed or full width. We can also go through and adjust that in the size. So you can see I can easily adjust that slider. You can see once it hits the edge of the size of this particular column because we set to boxed, even though I'm increasing that, nothing is happening. So what I can do is I can set that to full width. That'll give me full width on there. But what I can also do is come to boxed, set this to stretch section, and then we'll use JavaScript to override the themes sort of settings on there. And we can now use this and stretch it out as much as we want. So we get various different ways we can use this to control the layout. So let's just take that off there, set that back to its default, and there we go. So we're back to where we were. We can adjust the column gaps and so on. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I've covered that in previous sections. We're just going to go through and see how easy it is to start styling things. So if I jump over to the Style tab, you can see where we had three different options on the background type. We now have a fourth option, which is the Gradient. Once I click on that, that'll open up all the options to deal with gradients inside Elementor Pro. This is pretty simple and straightforward. We can choose the color for the first part of the gradient, the color for the second part of the gradient. We can adjust the location, in other words, the position of where that gradient takes effect for the first and the second colors. We can choose the type of gradient. We can go from linear and we can go radiant, uh, radial. When we're in linear, you can see we can set the angle that's going to be displayed. When we go to radial, we've got a whole range of different positions for the center point of that radial gradient. So let's take a look at how easy it is to start giving this some effects. So let's just scroll down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. You can see because I've set a gradient now, you can see that if we take a look in the background, you can just about make out the fact that we've got a light gray at the bottom and nothing at the top or white in this instance but it doesn't really stand out very much. So what we can do is we can come back over to the layout section. We can click on the stretch section and you can see once we do that, if I scroll down, you can see now that we've got that stretched out with the gradient displayed in the background, which is great. So what we're going to do is jump back over to the style section. We're going to change this from being a radial gradient. Before we do, let's take a look at some of the other options in there. You can see at the moment, the center point is in the top left hand corner. But if I go to center center, for example, you'll see the radial gradient starts in the middle, the lightest color and the grayer color on the outside edges. If we come down, we can just say bottom right. And you can see now we go from white in the bottom right hand corner to the full gray in the top left hand corner. Jump back over to the type, choose linear. And you can see that now goes from light at the top to gray at the bottom. We can adjust the locations of these. You can see the location on the second color basically affects how much of a gradient or how smooth the gradient is. So you can see as we increase that, we get a nice, soft, smooth gradient transitioning from the top color to the bottom color. If we take that over to the left-hand side, you can see we basically end up with a 50-50 split. So we can take that right over. We got a nice hard lined edge on there. So another cool way of doing things. But I want a nice gradient on this. So let's go for about 75 and you can see if I adjust the top one, it does exactly the same. So you can see we're just going to set that down to about look about 20 on there. And you can see that gives us a nice smooth gradient between the two sides. Next up, we can come down and we can choose a border. So let's just say we want to put a little line at the top and a little line at the bottom that just sort of separates these sections out a little bit. Easy enough to do. We just unlink these sections for the width and the color of the border. Choose the type and we'll go for solid. We'll come down, the color's fine. If we wanted to, we can choose any color from there, but I'm gonna keep it to the gray color. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we wanna have at the bottom, it's gonna be one pixel and the same for the top. Now, the reason I uncheck the chain link is because I don't want anything on the left or the right-hand sides. So you can see once we've done that, if we take a look now, we've got this nice thin stroke line. If we find it's a little dark, easily come in, adjust that to get exactly what you want. So it's a nice subtle look to give some separation there. 
If we now jump over to the advanced section, we can easily then just open up some space in this. So we can just use the margins or we can use padding, whichever we want to use. And again, we've got the chain link options on there. So let's come up to the margin, unlink those, and we'll spe specify, let's go for 30. Now, if we do that, you can see what that does is that pushes down the entire element, including the line. That might not be what you want when you're using these lines. So we can just set that back to zero. And this time we'll use the padding. Padding sits inside the row, margin sit outside the row. Obviously the border sits on the edge of the row that you're dealing with. So let's just come to this, uncheck, make sure that's all unchecked. We'll put 25 in there and we'll do the same in the bottom, 25 in there. And you can see that now just gives us a little bit of breathing room between the top element and the row above it and the same with whatever's gonna sit below. So very quick and easy. And as you can see, dealing with gradients is an incredibly simple thing to do. If we wanted to change these colors, we can easily do that. So let's just choose this, come for a red color, for example. And you can see that now creates a simple gradient. We can easily adjust that, like I said, just by using the sliders to adjust how smooth and how soft the gradient is. So we get a really nice soft gradient on there. Very quick and very easy. So that's all there is to dealing with gradients inside Elementor Pro. So that's some of the new features that have been added to the latest version. I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into what you can do with this fantastic pro version of Elementor. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.